paint. You talk about my panto as well, it'd be nice. Because, yeah, we can talk uh, yeah, about all, all sorts. Stuff, so what yeah. should we, shall we firstly, as it was yesterday, yeah. shall we talk about London? Yeah, London? let's do that, yeah. So tell me about the first time you did it. Well, I first did the uh, London in 81, mm -hmm. and I did the first four when I was on Blue Peach, and then, um, and then I decided I was going to do it every 10 years, mm. 91, 2001. I was going to do 2011, but uh, I can't remember why I couldn't do it, so I did 2012, and I did last year's, and you did no, yesterday. I did it yesterday. Amazing. 420. What, for what? No, 450. 450. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's, it wasn't too yeah. bad. Mm. Yes, I, I started off with the 311, working my way down to about five, five, five and a bit. Yes. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's but what happens how, do you, how do you um, recover from marathons? Like, well, I'm aching a bit today, and my yeah, toes well, are a bit sore. Surprised. I mean, mm. I think the thing about it is that you, you, you don't, the, the last bit, as we all know, us, run, us marathon runners, <laughs> we all know that last bit is the unpleasant bit, really. But if you don't go too mad at the start, you don't really get. Um, you know, you shouldn't, you can go home, you're, you're looking great. I, mean, you, you know. I don't feel too bad. That's I must brilliant. admit, I don't yeah. feel too bad. Yeah. So I've retired now, though. I'm not, I'm not doing any more. You know, no. why is that? <laughs> <laughs> It's enough. Just people go on and on and do marathons for until they're in their eighties and nineties, yeah, don't they? You just is this life too short or No, it's just no, I just want to do other physical things really. I mm. mean you know, keep up the yoga and other sports and okay. I still play football. Because you are you're well known for being sort of quite an active yeah, chap, yeah. aren't you? From like doing all your Blue Peter stuff and yeah, yeah, I did a TV series and I've done the thing a few years ago, I think a TV series, a reality thing called The Games and then I did something called Tumble which was a big sort of like a strictly about acrobatics, that was only about four, four years ago, so I've always kept the physicality stuff. Have you ever been injured? Because somebody who's as active mm. as you are, it must be awful to no, not be able to do it. I think you're quite careful actually when you're, when you're, I, 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 I'm not reckless mm. like that really, I mean I think that's keeping, keeping yourself in a, uh, fit state and you know making sure you don't hurt yourself because yeah. otherwise you're coming and it's I suppose it's a similar thing for theatre isn't it you have to keep well, yourself fit yeah, for, for performing body and mind really. mm. yes particularly in this play yes yes, yes. <laughs> so, well let's talk about it then shall yeah. we so it's a ghost story yeah and based on a real life well it's it's set in Guernsey so mm. it's it's about the fables uh, and the, the folklore and the superstitions of Guernsey, which uh, seemed obviously to be quite highlighted, uh, uh, like all island, island races, no offence, they're all a bit strange, including us, look at the last few days in this country. But the smaller the island, maybe the bit more crazy they are, but there were a lot of witch burnings, of course, because the Nazis were there for five years during the Second World War. And, and um, you know, historically, um, lots of, as I say, witches burning on stakes and things. So a lot of the, the stories that the other character comes and tells me about, because he's a supernatural expert and mm. I'm, a, I'm a historical expert. So it's a mixture of believing in real things and believing in, in obviously the supernatural. So that's mm. where the debate of the story is, is told. But really with a, a ghost play, you, you are expecting a few, you know, jumps and it's not... I mean, it's not all just talking, there's a few scary, no, no, really scary and, and bits. No, no, and I have heard that it's a real, um, you know, hide under your seats kind of jobby. I think the seats are a bit small here, but yeah, yes. Yeah, and I definitely <laughs> don't want to be doing that. <laughs> no, no, there's a, there's a few yelps, it, which really? so far we've worked out. Yeah, yeah. Yelp <laughs> moments. <laughs> So we should say it's a it's a two hander, isn't it? Yeah, really? no, me and Daniel, who you just met earlier, Daniel yeah. Rayford, he's yes, he plays one part and I play the other. Yeah, so we, it's a it's a, yeah, it's a real good uh, acting piece, you know, which mm. is nice to do. Um, one hasn't uh, since um, you know for a while done that stuff, partly because of COVID and and stuff. And so yeah, you know, once you get your teeth into it and you get on top of it, it's, uh, mm. it works. Really. Yeah, it's yeah. quite nice, I think, two handers. You can sort of bounce off each other, can't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, and he's fantastic. Mm. The young actor, he's really good. There, there he is, is talking about him now. <laughs> My co-star's coming just because I'm on the telly. Oh, hear his voice there. Look, of course you can. Oh, is that all right? So you can't see him. Never mind. He's much younger than me. Uh -huh. It's no good. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you. It's nice to have the staff come in, isn't it? Whilst we're doing the interview. Okay, find a do not disturb sign. Somewhere. Never mind. 
Right, your, so where were Your we? listeners' viewers will enjoy that. Too. I'm sure they will, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about other things you've done, because people know you for the Blue Peter and being an action man, but mm -hmm. um, you've done a lot of writing. You've even written your own panto. Well, we've made these films, yes. Yeah, so come, come the, um, the beginning of COVID, I realised there wasn't going to be any um, a pantomimes, or I predicted there wasn't, and I decided to make a... Um, a panto film of Jack and the Beanstalk and me and my neighbours' back gardens, which it might be. And so we got giants and a big cast in, and um, it, it, it was extraordinary, really, because it progressed from being what I, I kind of imagined would be quite a small affair that we sell online, but it ended up as a big cinema release and all around the country, and, uh, you know, in every man cinemas, the showcase cinemas, and then we... Um, and it was hugely successful, and we um, we did all, we, and lots of schools, about three thousand schools came saw it in school because wow. they couldn't go to the panto. Yeah. So suddenly there was this wonderful pantomime genre going on to film. So mm. it said, had all the ingredients of pantomime. You could still shout at the screen and do all the things you do when you go to theatre. But Very it also happy. yeah, no, it wasn't. It had all this intimacy of of proper storytelling as well because good pantos need to tell a proper story. And then we, the following year we made uh, Cinderella. Um, uh, which was a much bigger production. <laughs> mm. um, and we went on location with coach and horses and all kinds of stuff like that. So with another big movie, a much proper bigger movie. And then we've just done a, well, I wouldn't call it a small one, but it was, it's a more intimate one called Panto Land, which covers things like uh, Aladdin and Peter Pan and Red Riding Hood. So it's a mixture mm. of stuff and other kinds of storytelling and puppets and muppets. And so it's, um, so yeah, wonderful. so we've done three. We've done three and this one, this one will be out in December. Why panto in particular? Well, because my parents used to do panto. So I grew up uh, very much in the world. They used to put them on and it's very much part of my folklore, if you like. Um, and I, I suppose I didn't really do it until after... Um, my Blue Peter days, um, and then I kind of started doing a few, and then I started producing them in the theatre. Mm. Um, yeah, so I've always, in, I mean, I really respect the genre, really. I mean, there's some terrible ones, and there's some brilliant ones, you <laughs> yeah. know. So you just, you, you know, when you when you love Panto, and you love, and I recently started playing Dame, because I used to play, them, you know, Jack and Dick, and all, mm. the, all the sort of the juve lead parts, <laughs> buttons, obviously, the yeah. parts with empathy, and then and then I moved on to Bad Is Abenaza, and and then finally, the last uh, two or three years, I've been playing the, the Dame. So. Which is a lot of fun. Yeah, it? yeah, it encompasses all those things because mm. you can story tell and you'll also get the laughs and you've got the costumes and the wigs. And and you were going to tell me yeah. about the very first time you so, played here. Yeah, yeah, so I'd just been at the, uh, um, I'd just been at the, uh, the National. Uh, I kind of got a great job uh, being a young sort of spear carrier and having little parts in Olivier's company in the, from 70 to 72. And then I kind of got some really good telly roles. And then I got offered to do a rep season here um, with this theatre, um, which is nearly 50 years ago. I can't pinpoint the exact date. So the first thing I came to do is uh, George Bernshaw's Candida. Mm. I played March Banks. And then I played Billy Liar. Um, that's a great part, That's a isn't great it? part. And then I did Equus, which obviously is getting the kit off. And, um, <laughs> and, and I think there was a bit of a furore with the local mm. churches. Um, and protests about uh, nudity on the stage, but you know, oh, what can I we bet do that about made it? front page of the. Of course, it made everybody want to come. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can hear, yes, yes, yes. You, <laughs> there's so many good <laughs> stories about it, but we, but yes, nudity and me, yes. But then, you know, it was great fun. It was great fun. I mean, wasn't? your CV reads. You've got, well, fifty you've years goes on forever. Such yeah. an exciting life, though. There must be. Is there anything that you haven't here I am, done? Back you, in the palace. And theater. back in the palace. <laughs> Is there anything you haven't done circle. that you'd like to do? Um, well, um, I haven't done Sondheim. I've always fancied doing Sondheim. But, um, and having made these films, I'm particularly into uh, thinking about see if that guy can progress with that. But then yeah. obviously I've always been into educational stuff because I was Chief Scout for five years. Yes. And, and, and a lot of my charity stuff I do is aimed at young people. So, mm. yeah, so, but, but as a performer, you want to... You sort of want to keep going, yeah. really, um, and then you take up opportunities like this play. You mm. know, it, can, it comes up, and you kind of go, "Yes, I'll do that." I was going to say, do you? Do they? Do they offer you the part? Do you have to audition? How, I did. How does it work? Well, sometimes you get offered parts, um, for, but, but not so much. Sometimes it's best to audition mm. because you you can, well, you can suss them out as well as them sussing you out as well. So, mm. um, but generally, for musical theatre parts and other good drama, you generally audition it's better to mm. audition mm. because because you can show them what value you might bring to it mm. really um but but sometimes you get you do get offered stuff but um 
tread carefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is uh, th this week is is all about spooking the South End audiences. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. I wonder if any of them are old enough because usually it, it, uh, ghost plays tend to have a slightly. I don't know what the audience are like here anymore, but they, they generally for tours they tend to be older audience mm. for ghost plays. Mm. So you know maybe some will remember. Seeing me naked in 1974, <laughs> I don't know. Well, if you did. I'm sure they'll let me know. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have any slip-ups on stage yeah. that, that make that happen again. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in honour of my performance <laughs> 50 years, I'm now going to take all my clothes off. <laughs> won't please my co-star, of course. He came in at the right He's time. He's coming back again, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that was a look to say, please don't take all your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> and I think on that note... Yes, well, let's all take our clothes <laughs> yes. off, you know. Please, audience, don't take your clothes off. <laughs> No, it's lovely to meet again. Congratulations yesterday. That's absolutely Thank you. brilliant. Thank you very 450. much. 450, yes, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Not bad. Not bad. Thank <laughs> Do you, you need a helping much. up or you'll be all right? I think I'm okay, but okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little bit like somebody <laughs> trod on my toe oh. on the tube on the way home. No, Do you, did you scream at them? I did actually. I'm usually, I'm, a, I'm not like that. I, I'm usually like, did, they not, did you not look like you'd run it? <laughs> but yeah, and I was just went, ah! Uh -huh. But she was very apologetic and she didn't do it on purpose. So, no, you know. let her off. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, um, whether you run a marathon or not, you'd certainly, people would enjoy this, I think. Yes. And enjoy being frightened as well. So. Yeah, I, I, it's the thing, isn't it? People just love to be scared, don't they? Hmm. It's just one yeah. of those those yeah. things. In fact, my character um, explains why you like being scared. So <laughs> to find out why, come and see it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right, we'll be there. Thank All you right. very much, Peter. Pleasure. Pleasure.